overnight, a possible permit from the city uh, to allow overnight dockage for just temporarily either one night, you know, or, or if it's a medical issue, maybe a few nights. Uh, that's just something I'd, I'd like to suggest. Uh, I'd also like to suggest a, uh, the, the current rate structure at Lashley's is uh, a night at the dinghy dock is more than a night on a mooring ball. Uh, mooring ball is 13, dinghy dock 15. That includes showers, uh, laundry, and bathrooms, which is nice. But those of us that have friends and family, I'm gonna call this the friends and family rate, uh, that are just here to visit friends and family, maybe in for a night or two a week or three or four nights, we, we don't need all those facilities, all we need is a dinghy dock. So I would, I would just offer the suggestion that possibly the rate structure could be modified so that we have a friends and family rate. Is that time up? Uh, uh, and you know, just, just modify the rate structure so that uh, those of us that, that don't need showers, laundry facilities can use the dinghy dock visit our families, visit our friends. Some people come down from up north, have friends here. Um, so <clears throat> just those two suggestions, I hope they're positive, I hope they're constructive. Uh, like I said, I am a resident here full time year round. I have family that lives and works here. Now it's time up. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on GA03-18, please make your way to the podium. Anybody else, please get behind the speaker that's up there now. Good morning, Gary Skellicorn, Punta Gorda resident. Uh, there is one, one factor I would like to point out of this. I'm not sure if it's obvious, and I am trying to encourage compromise. Uh, I can see situations of a safety problem. You know, we have individuals that are gonna come in, have entertainment at the dock, or maybe even work situation, and then later need to get back to their vessel again. Any time of evening, night, uh, we're coming on to the storm season coming up. What would you do if you had to get back to your boat or in possibly incur a $100 fine? A, thunder, a thunderstorm comes up, I'm in my dinghy getting out to the, uh, to the vessel to avoid that. I think we're looking at a potential safety uh, uh, implementation issue here. I would like to encourage compromise if, if at all possible. Safety, I think we have a real risk for the vessel people. I'm a, I'm a boater, I know what it's got, and I won't go out there in, in instances, but the get to or have to get to is uh, maybe, maybe too much or looking for compromise. That's what I'd like to suggest. Thank you, anybody else? Last call for GA03-18. Last call on this public <coughs> hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion, a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carried unanimously. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, I attended the Boaters Alliance meeting last week and um, we had a very long discussion with Officer Kennedy, who's the Marine Patrol officer. And there's some unintended consequences of putting an ordinance like this in place. Um, he has spent quite a bit of time going around to all the boats that are anchored out in the harbor and meeting with all the boat owners, speaking with all of them, making sure their boats are current registry and that they're getting their pump outs on a regular basis and all of the rules are being followed for those who are liveaboards and who have their boats anchored out there. Um, one of the things that, is, that happened, obviously we know about the, the dinghy uh, dinghy docks being abused and, and all of that. But we also had a gentleman with a huge cruiser boat who was coming into the, the day dock all the time with his cruiser boat and occupying one whole side of one of the day docks. And, um, and he ended up bending up his props and now he's over at Lashley every day. So he's using a significant amount of dock space with a cruiser boat. And I, that wasn't one of the original intents of our day docks, I don't believe. Uh, even though it's allowable, it's, it's not preferable. But um, what I would suggest, I understand we have to have something that's enforceable, and that's, that's one issue. But I would suggest that we set up some kind of a process whereby these two gentlemen, for example, um, that they could perhaps buy a permit from the city that would allow them access to the day docks for certain times. And in the case of an airline pilot, he's got a very 
sporadic schedule. He's, he's in and out at all different hours of all days and nights. Um, and there has to be a happy medium. And at the times of the year when Fisherman's Village and Lashley Marina are both overloaded with, with boat traffic staying there on a long-term basis, um, there has to be an alternative for those people. And I'm just going to suggest that we consider putting some kind of a program in place where we can, we can issue a permit and maybe they renew it every three or four or six months. I don't know how often it's gonna have to be, but we've got a lot of traffic that's here right now just for season. So maybe we can do a three or a four month kind of a permit that would allow them to come ashore and have unlimited availability for those docks without a penal penalty for them. Mm -hmm. So um, rather than being the, the, um, the dock police um, and taking a lot of the police department's time up, this might be a reasonable alternative. Um, we, we know we don't have uh, the showers and all of that at, um, at Gilchrist Park, and that probably won't ever happen, according to what we've heard from the surveys we received. But those services are available at Fisherman's Village, and they are available at Lashley Marina if somebody wants to go to their, their day docks for, the, for dinghies, and they can use those services. So I'm just offering this as an alternative way of um, trying to be really heavy-handed with, with an ordinance that is going to be heavily enforced and, and cause problems. Where is the language section 618 with the fines? I don't see it in this. Um, it already existed, so it wasn't okay. in this ordinance. Um, the section, six, when it section did for, for boat ramps, um, the, the section's already included, so there were no changes to that. Okay. It was already existing for this section. So if you out. wanna see it, I can. Yes, please. Um, I would ag agree that if we can provide some manner for uh, the, those who, um, by virtue of the fact of their, their jobs, or it could be something where somebody has, um, an, well, we know that they're going to be extenuating circumstances and there could be illnesses or whatever, but at least a permit or a registration or some sort so that somebody, um, who may be working, a, a medical worker may be working at night kind of thing uh, and may need to do that. Um, so it's there are those situations and I think um, for us just to have the, the ordinance as it reads is it's um, needed but we need to allow for accommodate those other situations. So I don't know how we would do that, what's the easiest way for staff to, but it's at least. Well, would they pay a fee? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. According to what John Kennedy said, he has talked with almost every boater out there, um, and they are. And, and Mr. Tams is, is, is shaking his head. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're very willing to work with the city, and they're very willing to pay a nominal fee to have the access available to them at different hours. And and I think that's that's really key. We, we have communication ongoing with them all now. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that before, and and the, the police department has been routinely checking the do docks mm -hmm. to make sure that no, no one is abusing the privilege of using them. So well, and, and other people that have opined on this issue, it's um, helping people understand that many of the things that we need is it, you need an upland facility mm -hmm. in order to be able to accommodate people, and we're not going to have an upland facility at Gilchrist Landing. So Fisherman's Village does have an upland facility. Um, as does the Lashley Marina. However, sailboats can't get under Lashley Marina. So we understand these issues. So if what we can do is just accommodate that overnight uh, dinghy parking for a fee, I think it's great. But my, my situation with that, if we, if we do permits, then if every single one of those people out there gets a permit, they're just, you know, then what have we accomplished? I mean, for extenuating circumstances, I mean, I wish we could have invited Officer Kennedy here. We could hear from him directly. Um, you know, not that I don't, you know, take what you're saying, but I would like to hear from him if, if he's, you know, Maybe got that valuable information. Chief, Chief Davis, are you here? <laughs> I mean, I don't think they're prepared, but. Um, well, I, I'm sure she's up to speed on what's going on because he, they've been communicating pretty regularly about it. But. I just think it, it, it would be nice if we could issue some kind of a sticker permit that they could put on their vessel, that they can, when they come to shore, at least they're identified as one of the people that's out there on anchor, that there would be some way that we can work with them. I mean, really, though, in our watch commander report, people call and say, you know, parking situations in the aisles or something of that nature, like, you know, somebody's 
staying overnight and they may be on the street to let people know. I mean, if it, I don't think it needs to be so formalized because then that's gonna be staff time and then the length of the permit and then how many permits do we issue and if we issue one to everyone, then they could just keep their diggings there. But those situations are known situations. In the case of the gentleman who spoke about mm -hmm. and is a pilot, I believe, um, and you don't know when your flight's gonna get delayed because of whatever. So you don't know that you're gonna get in. You expect to get in at 10 o'clock in the evening and you don't get in until 3.30 in the morning. I mean, those kind of situations occur and you're helpless in that situation unless you call the PGPD number and say, hey, this is my situation. I mean, whatever it is, we need to provide some sort of, of way for people to be able to um, accommodate that. It's, we got this hand, then we got Chief Davis in here. Well, let's, I, I have some suggested language for discussion purposes, but let's, I'll, I'll present that in a moment. Um, I like what Mr. James said about maybe like a one day special one. I say this because ultimately, if everyone got permits, we would have what the issues that Sarah said I had. We, everyone have a permit, we just have a mess. And, and I think this is to prevent people from literally having overnight dinghies. But I do think that if, like you mentioned, if you can have a situation where people can maybe get a special permit, a special permit is a special permit. But on a regular basis, we would no purpose in doing this regulation at all. Gary. Okay. So I am very empathetic that uh, for the folks that have to anchor out on a Gilcrest to allow them to use the uh, day docking facility to be able to get safely to and from shore. Uh, what uh, Lynn, uh, uh, Council Member Lynn brought, uh, Matthews brought up earlier is something that I'm not seeing in the discussion. I think we do. To me, there's a difference between a dinghy and a cruiser. Okay, the cruiser is a problem. Okay, the dinghy is a situation that we need to come up with a solution for. Okay, a dinghy is a dinghy. It's not my. It's not you know. So, uh, and then frequently, and I'm just throwing this out, is frequently in many communities, they treat, and we could treat this as a community uh, or neighborhood, if you will, it's the Gilcrest Anchorage community or something like that, uh, that you have permits for the community that would give them a little extra privilege that the general public wouldn't normally get because, and they apply and they have their sticker in their windshield and, you know, they have uh, nighttime parking there that might not be available to the tourist and so forth. Uh, and that can happen in a number of communities. It's, uh, so there would be a way to identify the people that are using the, f the facility as a neighborhood, would, would have it. So, so if you had to, if, if, if you're flying out at uh, 5.30 in the evening and you have, we know you, and you're part of that neighborhood and you leave your dinghy on, your dinghy, not your cruiser, your dinghy on the dock that night, it's not that big a deal. Tied to the dock. Tied to the dock, yeah. Mm -hmm. Parked. Let me use a parked, okay. Uh, that's not that big a deal because we know what's going on because they're part of the neighborhood versus a transient person that's just coming in for the night or for a week or what have you. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily be eligible for this permit uh, because of that, that transientness, but, and they would have to comply, you know, with the fact that they wouldn't be on to let, a, let a, they can enjoy the nightlife, but they have to be back to their boat by... 11 o'clock, otherwise they turn into a pumpkin or something. So, uh, you know, I think that's the solution to, to sort out and then also to deal with a way to prohibit the cruiser situation at Lashley. It's one thing to come in and say, okay, I, I'm gonna bring my boat in, which is a large, significantly large boat, just as Council Member Matthews is, and we wanna go have dinner at the Crab House and we wanna pull in and we're gonna stay two hours. You know, we can have a nice dinner in two hours, have, uh, have that incredible ice cream for dessert that downstairs, and then we're gonna get on our boat and we're gonna go home. Okay, that's fine, that's what that should be for. It shouldn't be for, gee, I'm out in the mooring field and I'm gonna go to work at uh, uh, Platinum Automotive and I'm gonna bring my 50-foot cruiser and leave it on the day dock while I go sell some used cars at Platinum Automotive. You know, we don't want that to happen. Right. So, uh, I, th I think that's really what we need to sort out. I think we should try to come up with a, a sorting for the community and then also a way to deal with the transients and then also a way to handle the obvious abuser. I think that's our challenge. Let's hear from you. Do you have a question for me? <laughs> um, well, it was brought up that Officer Kennedy made a presentation of the Boaters Alliance and provided a lot of information about what is actually going on out there. 
and then Lynn reported on that. So I, I just was saying it would have been nice to have had that firsthand here today had we known that. So okay. maybe we need to pause. Maybe we need to invite him back. And I mean, I would I be fine with that to just further explore and get him. I'll definitely can have him come to the next. Do you want to have him at the next council meeting? Yes. I would Absolutely. Be fine with that. Absolutely. And, and this would give us time to explore what Gary's saying right now in terms of creating that kind of framework. Yeah. And maybe we, we can take another look at the, the possibility of doing some kind of a permit for those who are liveaboards who are here for a long term. Mm -hmm. I mean, are, are, you, are you two gentlemen here long term? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, and how many boats are out there long term? Do you have any idea? Uh, probably four. Excuse me. Yeah, you come can't to the speak from the sorry. audience. I'm sorry. Yeah. Come oh, to the sorry. podium. Just sorry, I for, and I forgot we closed the public hearing. But. Right off uh, the top of my head, I think four. Okay. So we're not talking, thank you. Um, so we're not talking about a huge amount of people and I just think that, you know, we profess Build to be- Build it, they will come. Yes. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah. we, you know, we profess to be a boating community and, and we need to be able to, but, we need to do something about that. I mean, we, you know, this is, this is what we're trying to accomplish with the, the new waterfront master plan that we're working on with the Boaters Alliance. So mm -hmm. I'm just suggesting that we try to be boater friendly and work with these folks because they are, um, honorable people who are here, and they, they do have jobs, they're working, they're, they're going to and from shore, and um, you know, I just think it would make a lot more sense yeah, than I than think what the vice heavy. mayor was talking about, though, is exactly, exactly right. It wasn't a dinghy that was coming to these day docks. It was a big, gigantic boat that was docking up all day and all night. <laughs> so it was a huge, and it was just moving from Lashley to well, that's a new way. And, and, and that's my point, and, and a point that uh, our, uh, our citizen, uh, Gary Skillcorn, made. We don't want it also, because of weather or something like that, has somebody to do something that's unsafe. Yes. Right, okay. which, they, which in our code here, it says after a prior written warning, we're not gonna just slap them a $100 ticket exactly. right okay. away. I understand it. And we do have yeah. communication with the people through yeah. the officer. Yes. I mean, he probably he, he knows which giving, dinghy he's been belongs to warning. which boat, yes. Yes. I would guess. And, and, and I, I've, I've heard rumors that most of our police officers, in fact, all of our police officers have had mothers and can be very empathetic to unusual situations. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> Uh, I think th I think that's the case. And as you pointed out, the, it got pointed out, and you guys kind of among yourselves thought handled one of the issues very rap rapidly. So I think it's a qu question. Everybody here wants to be good neighbors, and we want to be uh, empathetic to the people that want to be in part of our community. We just have to figure out how to sort it out. And I would also like the homeowners association to, if you haven't already talked about this, to talk about it. We talked about some. I mean, homeowners. What they're saying is they're very concerned about. Pretty much a community building off of people who were parking the boat out there, as opposed to using utilizing Fishman's Village, Lashley Park, or maybe this is an opportunity for our business community to develop new business based on this. But just having long term stays just to stay is problematic because it does impact, because it is a neighborhood. In the same way that you have to think about traffic on a road, we have to think about the impact on the neighborhood of just having a million boats out there and making it too easy to live here is not necessarily in the interest of, I think, our residents. So if we could get him back Absolutely. to the next meeting, and do you want to talk about... A couple of things. First, yeah. based on the discussion, I suggest that you reopen the public hearing and continue this public hearing until the next city council meeting. Uh, so at a date certain, we don't need to re-advertise. Um, the, um, you know, I'm not sure that I recall really being involved um, in any discussions regarding the utilization of the day dock um, by the residential neighborhood compared to the discussions concerning the day dock at, at Lashley Park. Not not use of, it, their concern is that there was trash and boats. No, 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 no. yeah, no. So I do know though, because I was involved in the permitting of the day docks at, Lash, at Lashley Marina, that the idea was that those weren't intended to be um, restricted to dinghies um, it was I, it was intended that anybody would come in with any size vessel as long as they could fit, um, um, and not for overnight, but to come in and enjoy the the city and and then leave. So I'm not sure that we um, are in a position, the way things are currently, to restrict sizes of vessels at the Lashley Park Marina. Um, on the other hand, I don't think it was ever intended that the docks over by the boat club were intended to be serving large vessels. So, you know, we can address that situation differently. Similarly, um, you know, we've got a dock master over at Lashley Park. We have 
restroom and shower facilities and all that kind of stuff um, there. So we would want to more or less encourage that being used as a dinghy dock for the liverboards um, to, so that we don't have um, uh, unmanned dock being used um, in a way that would be more difficult to, to regulate. Not having a solution to that, but just throwing out things for, for consideration when we discuss it the next time. But with respect to the permitting, uh, I'm just going to throw this out for discussion. Um, and this would probably be related to allowing the dinghy docks to, to dinghy dinghies to utilize um, and require them to utilize the uh, Lashley Park Marina dock, day dock. And that is that uh, we have the prohibition against overnight docking between those hours. And then, and then I would add language such as without a permit issued by the city's dock master, the permit shall be for a maximum of three consecutive days, no more than two permits per vessel within a 30-day consecutive 30-day uh, consecutive period. I think we have something similar to that with respect to um, uh, garage sales, for example. We issue permits for garage sales, but there's a limit to how many permits you can get for a garage sale within a certain period of time so that people don't have their property being used for mm -hmm. daily or weekly garage sales. So, that would be kind of the concept I would throw out. There's nothing magical, magical about the days, but when we bring, when we come back next time, if that's something that um, that you might be willing to consider with further input from the people that would be affected by it, um, that's how we could at least address address some of these concerns. We can't address every one of the exceptions that might be um, um, necessary, except for the discretion that's allowed regarding the. Um, um, giving a, a prior warning. Sounds good. Nancy? Um, I, I like your suggestion of continuing it on. <coughs> as far as <coughs> this, <coughs> excuse me, the notion of limiting how many times somebody can, I just think that that is onerous for us and it's problematic for the people because in this case, you know, you might have someone who's working um, and that they need to be there overnight, uh, and that is, can be more than, or, you know, I just think we need to think in terms of the, of the, the pilot, how many times, don't know. You know, we're limiting it, and then all of a sudden, you're over it. Oh, gosh, you know, the schedule threw me out of the, that window. So I, I think that... Um, I mean, in his case, he's already said that he is looking for permanent dockage. If it doesn't work for those people, they need to find a permanent place where it does work for them. And I, I get what you're saying, that the um, Gilchrist Landing is totally unmanned and unsupervised. And actually, when we saw right. the signage that we have up there, it, we need to at, at least update the signage that we have there. So there is some structure to, to what's going on. I'm glad that they're policing themselves now. That's, that's um, encouraging to hear that. But I definitely think we need to, um, like Jaha said, uh, consider the impact on the neighborhood and be voter friendly, but we can't, you know, every situation is going to be different. But I do, I do like the, the direction that you're going, but we need to reopen the public hearing and continue it. And then we can talk about this at the next meeting and we can have Officer Kennedy come. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we need a motion. A motion to continue. A second. We got to reopen, reopen the public yeah. hearing well, we, for we GA. Open, yes. We open public hearing for GA is on the other page. 03-18. Yes. And yes. continue yes. at the same motion or? That's yes. fine. And okay. continue. Second. second. We have a motion, a second to reopen the public hearing for GA 03-18 and to continue it to the next meeting, which will be April 4th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Let me just share another thing to be thinking about. Um, the obvious, one of the problems is that the, the dock, the, the day dock over by the boat club has a limited number of spaces. And if those spaces are being occupied by the boats that are currently out there, there's obviously no room for somebody else. If, if the city wanted to try to address that problem in a way that didn't re to use permits or, or, or prohibitions regarding time, et cetera, 
you know, maybe the thing to do is to consider some sort of facility like an upland um, dinghy storage rack uh, so that the people can take their dinghies out of the water so that they're not, not uh, taking up space at the dinghy dock to prevent other people from doing that. Do you know uh, how much they weigh? Well, I actually belonged to a sailing club where that was what we did because we didn't have um, enough space um, for the uh, dinghies to all be in the water at our dinghy dock, and we had upland store. We had an upland rack that you could pull the water, pull the boats out of the the, the water and put them up. It's it's certainly not something that two people couldn't handle. But they're not two people doing it. These, there's one person going ashore to go to work. And, and I, in the case of my dinghy, when no. we had our dinghy, our engine weighed 90 pounds all by itself without the dinghy. I'm just throwing that out for consideration. It worked fine for us as sailors. I'm not sure That's uh, you know, how we, whether we had large motors like that. We were a small sailing club. Um, I would just say for people who want to be a In pilot. fact, in fact, I think most of us were rowers to row our dinghies out. Yeah, those were maybe These days gone aren't. by. <laughs> I think permanent people want to be a permanently. I think seeking permanent dockage is the road. That's just. I mean, it doesn't benefit the city that people just living here. I just it's just not. This is not even financially make any sense. So, yes, uh, Howard. May I caution us on going the storage route because yes. the neighborhood complained regarding the storage of the sailboats by the Bayfront Center. So if we add more storage, you're going to hear from the Historic District Homeowners Association once again. I would not be in favor of storage in that location. No, no me, either. me either. Okay, next we have one, two, three, four quasi judicial public hearings, the first of which is AX01 18. Well, first, anyone that's going to be speaking on any of these four public hearings needs to rise and be sworn by the city clerk at this time, please. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. When you're ready to speak, please come to the podium, state your name, and indicate that you've been sworn. All right. The first ordinance is AX-01-18, the first reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City Council of Punta Gorda, Florida, annexing within the corporate area of the City of Punta Gorda, property generally described as multiple loop properties, Punta Gorda, Charlotte County, Florida, and more particularly described in Exhibit A attached here too, containing 13.78 plus or minus acres in accordance with the voluntary annexation provisions of Section 171.044 Florida Statutes, redefining the boundary lines of said city in conformance therewith, amending the official boundary map of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, directing the City Clerk to provide certified copies of this ordinance to the Charlotte County Clerk of Court, Charlotte County Administrator, Florida Department of State and Florida Office of Economic and Demographic Research, providing for conflict and severability and providing an effective date. Good morning for the record, Joan LeBeau, Urban Design Manager, and I have been sworn. These are the remaining properties, all but one of the remaining properties within the, jo the, mu the Jones Loop Municipal Service Area, and they are seeking to annex into those boundaries that were previously annexed. I ask that the staff report be entered into record in its entirety. Uh, Planning Commission found the application to be consistent with the city's comprehensive plan, and they recommended approval, as did uh, the DRC. Urban Design also recommends approval of this ordinance at the first reading, and we ask that it be scheduled for the next meeting for the second hearing. I'll, I'm available for any questions. Questions for Joan? Mm -mm. This is, do, do they have, they don't have any type of presentation, do they? No. no. Okay, this is a public hearing. If you would like to speak on AX01-18, now would be the time. Please take this podium over here. State your name that you've been sworn. You have three minutes. Would anybody like to speak on AX01-18? Last call. Stand up and make your way over to this podium if you would like to speak on this item. Move to close public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Move approval of AX-01-18. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve AX-01-18. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. <coughs> Next is CP-01-18. This is the first reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. The ordinance of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending the City of Punta Gorda Comprehensive Plan future land use map to include newly annexed lands, amending the future land use map to reflect the change in the current designation of low density residential slash county and commercial slash county to highway commercial corridor slash city for 13.78 acres being a portion of South Highlands according to the map or plat thereof as recorded in plat book two, page six, public records of Charlotte County, Florida, together with sections 28 and 21 and 28, Township 41 South, Range 23 East, being more particularly described in Exhibit A, the loop area attached here to providing for conflict and severability and providing an effective date. Again, for the record, Joan LeBeau, Urban Design Manager, and I have been sworn. And inadvertently, um, in your packet, you have the wrong staff report for this comprehensive plan amendment. Um, although it is very similar, that is the Walmart one. So I'd like to uh, present and enter into record the corrected staff report, which is very similar to the one that you were reading. The only difference is, of course, that it is vacant land, not um, developed properties. And um, everything's been advertised correctly. The um, um, And you've, you've submitted these to us this morning. You all have a copy I of will, it. I'm sending them across now. Okay. Karen, would you pass these back? I didn't get a copy of it. She's sending it right now. Um, the conclusions that I would like to read into record, um, this is a requested um, comp plan amendment for the future land use to be changed to the highway commercial corridor of the city's classifications. Any future development or expansion will be required to meet all the adopted standards um, in place for the uh, land use designations. The amendment does meet the criteria for processing this adoption and um, a total of 450 residential units are available within this loop <coughs> municipal service area as previously adopted in the interlocal service boundary agreement and joint planning agreement. The Punta Gorda um, Development Review Committee and Planning Commission both uh, approved this in its entirety. Uh, staff finds that the request is consistent with our comprehensive plan. We move to recommend approval of this request and also ask that it be transmitted to the DEO for the proper processing and review. Questions for Joan on the comp plan amendment? This is a public hearing. If you would like to speak on CP01-18, now would be the time. Please take this podium, state your name. You have been sworn. You have three minutes. Anybody like to speak on CP01-18? Last call for anybody, CP01-18. Moved to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Move approval of CP-01-18. We have a motion and a second, Lynn, to approve CP-01-18. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. She didn't hear you. Sorry. I, she looked up and I just said it was you. Oh, I'm sorry. Next, we have Z-01-18. Yes, this is the first reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, rezoning 13.78 plus or minus acres, being a portion of South <laughs> Highlands according to the map or plat thereof as recorded in Plat Book 2, page 6, Public Records of Charlotte County, Florida, together with sections 21 and 28, Township 41 South, Range 23 East, being more particularly described in Exhibit A, the loop area attached here too. From its current Charlotte County zoning classifications of Commercial General, CG, mobile home conventional MHC, residential single family five, RSF five, to city of Punta Gorda zoning district, highway commercial HC, providing for conflict and severability and providing an effective date. Again, for the record, Joan LeBeau, urban design manager, and I have been sworn. Uh, this is the companion uh, rezoning that goes with the comprehensive plan amendment. Um, the rezoning is the next step in this process and 
um, at this time, the request is to rezone the area to the city's highway commercial zoning district. Staff recommends approval, and it will come back to you um, once the comprehensive plan is uh, has finished its review with the Department of um, the DEO Economic Opportunity. Joan, just for clarification, these areas were essentially non-enclave enclaves within the the previous annexation. And these rezonings and comp plan amendments are consistent with the immediately surrounding area yes, that they already are. exists. Yes, they are. They will assume those, uh, they will be given those same uh, qualifications once the, it is approved. Yeah, Any other quick, questions? What is a non enclave enclave? Well, <laughs> we had to, there's, there's a definition of enclaves uh, in the statute relating to annexation. And uh, in order to have the loop property annexed, notwithstanding the fact that there were a few holdout properties, little donut holes uh, in the larger donut, we entered into an interlocal agreement with um, Charlotte County mm -hmm. that allowed us to take advantage of a, of a separate provision in the statute relating to voluntary annexation that allowed us to uh, um, annex the, the donut without the donut hole and not running afoul of the first part of the statute. Other questions for John? <laughs> the platted lands helped. Anybody understand that? <laughs> this is, yes, this is, we're, we're bringing in the donut hole. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is Z01-18. If you would like to speak on Z01-18, now would be the time. Please make your way to this podium. State your name that you have been sworn. You have three minutes. Would anybody like to speak on Z01-18? Last call, anybody? Jump up right now if you want to speak. <laughs> have you been sworn, sir? I have. Okay, state your name I, and the For the record, sworn. I'm Steve Hagenbuckle with TerraCap Management. We are the property owner, and uh, as suggested, that is the, the remaining parcels. Um, we had to go through a, a, a very patient uh, and time-consuming acquisition process to uh, make sure it was fair for all parties. and. And I just want to um, stress that staff has been fantastic to work with, as always, um, council as well. And um, we're, we're very excited to get the final donut holes <laughs> acquired, annexed, rezoned, so that we can have a, a comprehensive plan for that area and hopefully bring some very good things. Some of you may have seen we've already uh, started with an Aldi is broken ground. Um, one of the things that's uh, taking a little uh, time and has delayed the project and the interest of some of the end users is um, the extension of uh, wastewater or sewer sewer run. So that's uh, scheduled to be completed in 2019. So um, you know, once all that comes together, hopefully we'll have some, some more exciting news to share with you. But again, I work with a lot of different counties. Um, Howard and the, and the team and council, uh, legal all the way through the whole group, you guys have been fantastic and uh, planning department as well. Um, our hats are off to you, and thank you for uh, being such good partners with the landowners. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. One quick question, sure. please. So uh, th there is, if I understand correctly, just one remaining parcel that you ha do not have ownership? The yeah, there's a very small parcel. Uh, it's uh, less than a quarter of an acre out of 171 <laughs> acres, right? This is, just so you know that, you know, I'm the second phase of, of uh, this um, uh, assemblage, if you will, it's been a 25-year assemblage process, um, and uh, so we're we're kind of the last phase of, of trying to accomplish this. So we have one one property owner uh, that uh, owns a quarter acre and just basically has set an unrealistic uh, ex has an unrealistic expectation of what that uh, quarter acre is worth. Uh, so you know we. I believe there's options of working around that without uh, acquiring the property, um, and uh, you know we'll we'll always be uh, fr friendly and willing to work with him as long as, as that property owner uh, is reasonable. So that that's really uh, something to be seen yet. So, but w as I said, and you've seen, we're very patient, and uh, you know we always try to do the right thing. So we'll we'll as they say, leave the light on for them and. <laughs> Maybe they'll come around. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Anybody else? Z01-18. This is property stamped on the county. It's a little 
Z01-18, anybody else? Move to close public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Move approval of Z-01-18. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Z-01-18. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Yes. We are going to take a break. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Eight minute break. So we'll come back at 10.45. Oh my goodness.